And greetings and welcome to the QCast. This is season four, episode 46. We are heading into the Sweet 16 round tomorrow, Friday, in the NCAA Division Three tournament. And uh, we're going live here to Angola. Well, I think it's Angola, Indiana, but Logan Pearson of Wisconsin Platteville, do you even know what what town you're in? Are you in Angola or or a suburb a suburb of Angola? Or where are you exactly? Do we know? Uh we're right right outside Angola. Can we call so. it a can we call it a suburb? Is it a suburb sure. of Angola? Yeah, that works. It's a it's a real honor to have you on here, uh, Logan. Uh, you and the Pioneers are having an incredible season. You're sitting here um uh, on the season 25 and 4 and uh you rolled through the WIAC at 12 and 2 you know when the season started everyone was talking about whitewater because they were in the final four last year right they were um they had a great team and they returned most of that team what were your thoughts in the preseason when all of us experts uh, were we're picking the Warhawks. I mean, were you guys feeling like a little slighted there back in October, November? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, we returned everyone, but uh, we were actually picked fourth in the league. So right. I kind of put a little chip on our shoulder, not being second or even third. So, you know, just seeing everyone be, uh, above us is like, I don't know. I think we're we're better than what other people think. And, and you guys have proven that, um, you know, you're sitting here about to play Case Western Reserve in the Sweet 16. We'll talk about that game in just a second. But I do want to take you back to, you know, roughly a year ago right now. Maybe it was more like 11 months ago. I remember that you were in the transfer portal back at the time trying to figure out what you were going to do. And, and, you know, being in the transfer portal doesn't mean someone's for sure leaving you know it means that they're exploring their options there's a whole bunch of d3 kids right now logan in the portal and i think people sometimes overthink that and think they're all leaving but can you first of all tell us like what was the decision why did you enter the portal like what were you looking for and then i want to ask you about your decision to come back but why did you enter the portal last year uh it was mainly just uh give myself options and uh, just see what was out there. And yeah. And obviously I didn't really like what I got. So um, I was fortunate, fortunate enough to come back to Platteville and it's been awesome. Yeah. When you, I remember when you announced that you were coming back, that was, that was a pretty big deal, right? Because that was, that was pretty much everyone looking at it like, Oh wow. Like they, they returned most of their crew and they're going to be really good. Um, what went into the decision to come back to Platteville? Like, how did you sort that out before making that call? Um, I thought it was just the best place for me and just uh, with the guys we had come back and just the support in the community and with the coaches and just all the guys on the team. It was just awesome. So uh, I knew this was where I wanted to be this year. So that ultimately was the main decision. Talk, if you would, Logan, about like how you picked Platteville. Let's kind of back up here. Tell everyone where you played your high school basketball first. Where'd you play high school? And uh, how did you pick Platteville? Yeah, so I'm from uh, Kimberly, Wisconsin. It's up by Green Bay. Um, it's a Division One school. And I just picked Platteville because it was the only school that really gave me a chance, to be honest. And I was like, not highly recruited out of high school and wasn't six four in high school either. So I kind of grew late and Platteville was always the ones at all my summer games and through the fall. And then I just built a good relationship with all the coaches. And then ultimately that's where I ended up. Pretty amazing, you know, to think that a lightly recruited kid is sitting here with the following stat line, 23.3 points a game, 6.1 rebounds a game, 2.9 assists per game, and a 425 percentage from beyond the arc. Those numbers I just read, I wonder, you know, if we, if we had some monster spreadsheet somewhere, maybe I'll have to get the the data cast guys on this. There, There cannot be, there can't be more than one or two guys in the country 
that are averaging 23 or more plus six or one or more plus three or one or more and shoot 425. How does a lightly recruited kid end up as a no brainer first team, all American D three guy. Tell, tell me Logan, like what went into that? Just a lot of work, hard work, believing in myself and just knowing that nothing's going to be handed to me. So I just knew I had to work for it. And uh, I remember sitting down with coach guard and uh, one of my goals was to be an all American. So it's just been a goal from the start. So just awesome being here and all my hard work's paying off. So. Yeah, when you when you look at the hard work and where you're sitting here, you know, you got this game tomorrow against Case Western Reserve. Now, you know, look, in the seeds, I guess they're the they're the higher seed because they're we know they're a one seed. In division three, we don't have all the seeds on the bracket, but we know they're a number one seed. We know that you guys are a lower seed than that. And uh I don't know. In this tournament, though, there's a bunch of games where I don't think you just throw the seeds out. Um, how do you approach this game tomorrow against Case Western Reserve? You know they're really good. I know you guys have prepared for them. What are your thoughts going into the game tomorrow against Todd McGinnis and his Spartans? Uh, you know, we, we got our hands full with uh, um, a good team, obviously. And like you said, they're considered a one seed in the tournament. And we know they got a lot of guys that score the ball. So we know – it's going to be a, it's not going to be easy, but we're confident. I'm confident in our guys that we're going to be ready to go. And we sh hopefully we're moving on to Saturday night. I want to say the game tomorrow is early-ish, right? 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. So you got that. And then the, the late game there in the building at Trine will be uh wash you and, and, and the host Trine. That, uh, that facility at Trine, I've never been in it. I've watched a million streams from it. It looks incredible. How nice is the uh, the facility at Trine, Logan? Pretty nice. They got a nice setup there. Can't <laughs> <about that. laughs> you are Mr. Low Playing key, about aren't a three thousand plus <laughs> arena. So it does. It look. It's a beautiful place. I've seen yeah. photos of it. I've, I've I've watched a lot of games there. It looks awesome. Your first two games, Logan, in the tournament, Bethany Lutheran. Um, 89 to 52 that doesn't happen all the time in the tournament and then you get a really good loris team that was playing really well and you win that one 81 to 67 you got to be pretty excited about those the the results <laughs> in your first two games and how well that you guys played scoring 89 and 81 back-to-back -back games yeah i mean we just came out at the home host we were fortunate enough to host so that was awesome. The atmosphere we had at Bull Ryan Court was insane. And um, we knew, like, we saw on Twitter that some of those guys had us losing to Bethany or we could be a vulnerable host to lose. So we kind of took that personally. So that was a big one on Friday night. And then we knew we had our hands full with Loris. But we we came out, defended, and just took care of business at home. Well, yeah, and and I got to remember. Let's go back on this. That you know, let's let's give a shout out here. These people that thought you were a shaky host. Was that my guy Poppers? Maybe was okay. was it was it Poppers? Do you remember? Can we let's let's get, let's get let's bring the receipts out. Was it Poppers? I think it was Poppers. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a wild card, Logan. This Poppers yeah, kid. That um he's he's really not that much older than you, but he's got a lot of hot <laughs> takes, and that was one of them that. I think you were considered like a suspect host school, right? And you go out yeah. and eighty nine to fifty two. Look, that was a little statement to Poppers, wasn't it? By the Pioneers, yes, was. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, on behalf of me, I would like to thank you and all your teammates because you know sometimes Poppers celebrating Poppers isn't always the best thing for <laughs> Division Three. <III. laughs> so I really appreciate you. Hey, talk about talk about Coach Guard. He he has been uh, consistently doing incredible things at Platteville. Um, talk about his coaching style. Talk about his impact on you in your four years there. Uh, yeah, his coaching style is just – he always wants us to make sure we're focused on ourselves and that we're distract, distracted from everything else outside of what we got within our team. So just making sure we're um, just – 
focusing on ourselves every day in practice, and he just brings a lot of energy to the team and just wants us to get better each day. And he's really had an impact on our relationship, especially, and just, like, the trust he's gained with me and the trust I've got from him has just been really good out over the past four years here. Yeah, is he – they use the term, like, players coach is he a players coach is he a guy that that kind of gets real close with the team and is is that a term you'd throw on coach guard yeah i'd say he's a players coach and yeah um, yeah that, that's what he seems like that's from the outside it it seems like he has a really really solid connection with you guys um the the league this year the WIAC, interesting year for for your league interesting year for the league that that uh, that my guys are in the CCIW these traditional powerhouses you know had years where look there there were multiple there were two top 25 teams this year in the in the WIAC for most of the year whitewater was in there until they finally fell out late did you feel like the league was down was it different than usual were there less great teams um what were your thoughts on what the league was like this year ah uh, it's a good question i don't know i can't i don't really say the league was down but because every night you knew you're gonna go in and get a get a good battle so i wouldn't say it was down but obviously from past years it could be considered down but um i know everyone thought whitewater was going to be the powerhouse in the we act so just I, yeah i don't know how to really explain what happened this year. <laughs> By the way, you say we act, I say why act. What, what's the right way? Is it we act? Is that, is that correct? I, don't know. Yeah, I hear all, both of them. I always have said we act, but. Just a matter of preference act. is what yeah, you're saying. So. <laughs> we'll have to take a poll of the people in Kimberly, Wisconsin and see what they think. <laughs> I mean, I've always said why, but I'm willing to change. I'm open to that. Um, just a couple more things. Cause I know I'm catching you on the eve of, like this huge game. And I really appreciate you being willing to, to do this, but just going back to the portal for a second. Um, there, there are, there are a lot of guys out there that are in that same spot right now, and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do next year. And um, I'm just curious what your, well, a couple questions here. What should they make their decision on? I know that's personal to everybody, but do you have any advice for these kids that have played in division three. Now they're in the portal, they've got great stats. People want them. D two D twos want them. Um, do you have advice for those people as they're trying to make their decision? Uh, I just say go wherever you think you fit best. Um, so if you think that's going to a division two school and you think they're going to give you a better opportunity there, then go for it. But I'm not, I'm not dis like say not to go or transfer out or come back, but I'll just say wherever you want to go that makes you most wanted is probably the best spot for you. So that would be my advice. And then I guess kind of part two two of that question is you're in your fourth year as a division three hooper, and I'm just curious your what are your thoughts on what division three is to you like what what makes division three special uh how would you describe division three to someone who who asked you about it i'll just say that it's a grind and it's it's something special that you don't want to take for granted because there's a lot of good hoopers in division three and that gets overlooked a lot because it's division three and you can't get a scholarship but that really doesn't mean anything so um just the talent level is has been an eye opening thing to me and just seeing how many how many hoopers there are in division three. So that's been the main takeaway. Yeah, well well said. Uh division three is full of full of guys who could play a lot of places. Um uh, by the way, I don't know if there's an answer to this yet. Um so feel free to say you don't know, but I think you're a true senior, right? Are you a true like do you have are you sitting on a COVID year where you could play one more next year? Is that correct? That is correct, yeah. And do you know yet what you're going to do next year? I yeah, I'm going to use my COVID year. So at at Platteville. Yep. Oh, that's the. I'm going to see you at the Shirk Center, my friend, next <laughs> year at the Jack Sigma Invitational. We yep. got we got Illinois Wesleyan, Platteville, Calvin, and Cal Lutheran. 
And so that's going to, that was the news I was hoping to hear right there. Logan Pearson is we're going to see you in the building in November. That is, that's seriously great news. And I'm always happy to hear that uh, people aren't getting cheated out of that ridiculously awful year back. What was that? Your fret, your freshman year, right? That you, you yeah, freshman year played 10 games or something, right? 10 games. Yeah. I think we got seven. So yeah. Yeah, people yeah, didn't play a lot. <laughs> it was pretty brutal. Yeah, it was yeah, pretty it was brutal. Really cool. So I'm glad to hear that you're able to come back next year and uh, you guys should have another great team. Um, fine, just a couple final thoughts here for you. Um, keys to your, your game tomorrow. You know, like when you think about what you've got to get done against Case Western Reserve, I know you're not going to give us the scouting report, but high level here. You know, what are the keys to where uh, if, if you do a couple of these things well, the Pioneers win the game? I think uh, the main keys will, will be probably just focusing on what we do best and just playing our game and not letting the the atmosphere, or the, the Sweet 16 get in the way of who we are and what we've been all year. And then I'll also say just playing defense and defending will be probably the biggest thing for us to get a win tomorrow. I would I would say usually when I see a Wyack team in the tournament and they and they defend and rebound, they turn out they turn out pretty well on the scoreboard, my friend. That's what I would say. <laughs> um Logan, you've been a you've been a sensational player uh for four years. And this year again, like I said to me, a no-brainer first team all American type season. Uh we've exchanged a little a little banter via DMs over the this season, which uh which has always been fun. And it's overdue, long overdue to have you on the QCast today. So, so it's been an honor on the eve of such a big game to get to talk to you. Um, I do want to leave you with the final thoughts here. You've got uh, UW Platteville Nation for sure tuning into the QCast today. You got D3 Nation. You got random people in Angola, Indiana, and whatever suburb you're sitting in right now. Um, what would you like to leave all of these people with Logan on the QCast, what kind of inspiring and, and, and wonderful final thoughts do you have for all of us today? Uh, just say thank you for all the support that you guys showing all year. Uh, you guys do a great job covering D3 and Platteville Nation does a good job of following us wherever we are, whether that's at Bo Ryan Court or Angola, Indiana. So just thank you for all you guys do. Hey, uh, it's a pleasure to watch you and people like you play. Um, you make it a lot of fun. And I wish you the best of luck tomorrow against a great Case Western Reserve University team. It should be a great game tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern time. The game is at Trine. And uh, in the late one there, it's Wash U against the host Trine. Should be a really great second weekend sectional um, in Angola, Indiana. Logan Pearson, you're awesome. And uh, good luck to you tomorrow good luck to you saturday and maybe we'll see you in fort wayne next weekend my friend thank you